Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my class. I'm glad I have another chance to share some thoughts with you. Last time we talked about metaphysics, what's really out there. This time I want to talk about epistemology. Epistemology is how do we know what we know? And there are three major trends of epistemology, trends that go all the way back to Plato and to Aristotle. The two trends are called rationalism and empiricism. And we really need to look at both of them if we want to understand ethics. If we go back to Plato, Plato was a rationalist, to use a more modern term to describe some ancient Greek ideas. Plato said that if you look out into the world, what you see are mere shadows. These are shadows of a perfect world, the world of the forms. But we can only know the world of the forms through our mind. We can't know it through our senses. And rationalism means we learn about the world through our mind. Now, Plato's student, Aristotle, in many ways agreed with Plato, but he was an empiricist. He said there is no world of the forms. We need to look out at the real world, real things, and we learn about them. We learn through our senses. So we have rationalism. We learn through our mind. We have empiricism. We learn through our senses. Knowledge that comes through our mind, knowledge that's already there without looking into the world, is known as a priori knowledge. A space P-R-O-R-I. Knowledge that comes to our senses is called a posteriori knowledge. A space P-O-S-T-E-R-I-O-R-I. -I. So we have a priori knowledge or a priori knowledge and a posteriori knowledge. What I want to do is look a little bit at both. And let's look first at Aristotle at empiricism, the idea that we learn through our senses. One of the most famous empiricists was a fellow named John Locke, and we're going to get into him a little more when we talk about human rights. He was the one that made up the idea of the right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. But John Locke was an empiricist. He said that our mind is like a blank slate. He used the phrase tabula rosa, a blank slate. And we get material, we get information from the outside world. And it's out of that information that we're able to put together ideas and interpret the world. For our purposes, the really interesting question is, can we learn ethics from the outside world? Is that something we could learn? through our senses. Is ethics some sort of a posteriori knowledge? Most of the empiricists were British. Of course we had John Locke and later on Bishop Berkeley. But the most famous of the empiricists who said we get knowledge from our mind was David Hume. And David Hume really taught we cannot learn ethics at all from anything that comes into our mind from the outside world. The outside world teaches us what is. Ethics is about what ought to be and one of the most famous quotes from David Hume is we cannot learn an ought from an is. We cannot learn ethics from science. We can learn how the world works but we can't learn right from wrong. And in fact, there were many things that David Hume said we cannot learn. We cannot learn about causation. One thing causes another. We cannot learn about God or religious faith. In fact, ultimately there was very little that we could know looking from the world, but his key idea was we cannot learn ethics. To David Hume, ethics was mere feelings, mere sentiments. Why is murder bad? Because... I don't like it. It feels wrong. Why is adultery bad? It's very similar to saying, why do you like chocolate, not like vanilla? Why do you like vanilla, not like chocolate? It's mere feelings, mere sentiments. But we cannot learn ethics from looking out at the world. 
there's going to be one approach to ethics that we're going to be studying that's going to try to learn ethics from the world, from science. It's going to be called utilitarianism. Utilitarianism, we study the effects of our ethical actions. What causes pain? What causes pleasure? And we say something is ethical if it maximizes pleasure and minimizes pain. So utilitarianism is kind of an answer to Hume. It's a way of trying to learn ethics from our senses. But that's empiricism. And many empiricists say we can't talk about ethics at all. Later there was a group of empiricists called the logical positivists who said all we can talk about is logic and science and everything else is forbidden. We can't even talk about it. That's empiricism. Rationalism is the other great approach to knowledge, and rationalism is the idea that things are in our mind. We have certain a priori knowledge. Of course, Plato was a rationalist, but the most famous rationalist that began philosophy in what one might call modern times, the last 400 years, was René Descartes, a French philosopher. Descartes began with radical doubt. He said, we can't even know that the world we see out there is true. We get illusions. Maybe there is some kind of demon that is tricking us, fooling us, preventing us from knowing reality. So we really cannot know. In fact, we really can't know much of anything. We have to doubt everything. The only thing I know without doubt is I am thinking. And so Rene Descartes very famously said, I think, therefore I am. Cogito ergo sum in Latin. I think, therefore I am. So he began that we are thinking beings, and then he went on first to prove that there's a God. He said that I'm a thinking being who has an idea of a perfect being in my mind, so that perfect being has to be in my mind from somewhere. It must exist since I can think about it. So there must be a God. And then he went on to prove the world exists. If there's a God, God's not going to trick me and fool me. So the world I see must exist. So there must be a physical world. It was Descartes that really separated between mind and body. He was the most famous dualist. Remember, dualists are people that say they're two substances. There's mind and there's body. Mind we know by thinking. Body, it took us a while to get the body according to Descartes. First we had to prove there's a God. God's not going to trick us. And therefore we have a body. Mind and body. Descartes wanted to go on and learn ethics from our mind. The trouble was that he died too early. He actually died after catching a cold and pneumonia while visiting Sweden and teaching philosophy at the crack of dawn in the cold winter to the Queen of Sweden. So it would take another philosopher, Immanuel Kant, who is going to come up with a form of a priori or a priori ethics. Ethics that we know not from the world, ethics that we know from our mind. And it was Kant who came up with what was called the categorical imperative. The categorical imperative says that in our mind we know that certain things are right and certain things are wrong. We know murder is wrong. We know adultery is wrong. We don't know that from the world. That's part of our mind. The way he worded it is, act in a way that you would want it to become a universal law. And the ethics of Kant became known as deontology. Deontology grew out of rationalism. So we have two approaches to the world, to epistemology, to knowledge. There's knowledge that comes through our Senses and utilitarianism is going to be ethics built on senses, studying the world. There's knowledge that comes through our mind. Deontology, the sense of duty, 
comes from our mind. And those are going to be the two major areas we will study in this class.